Hey everybody. Today we're talking about the gamma distribution in R. Remember, the gamma distribution models the time that elapses before a fixed number of occurrences of some randomly occurring event, like calls to a pizza place or defective products in a factory. Technically, events that occur according to a Poisson process. I have a whole video about the gamma distribution. I'll throw a link up top. If you're not solid on it, you might want to start with that before getting into the R code. A gamma distribution is completely specified by two parameters. Theta, which represents the average time between occurrences, and alpha, the total number of occurrences that you're waiting for. These are known as the scale and shape parameters, respectively. Sometimes, instead of that scale parameter, we instead specify the average number of occurrences per unit time, per interval. And that's known as the rate parameter, lambda. Lambda is equal to 1 over theta. You specify 1. The other is then specified for you. By default, base R functions use the rate parameter, lambda. If you want to specify the scale parameter theta instead, you have to explicitly say so. And I'll show an example of that in just a minute. There are four basic functions in R for calculating using the gamma distribution. First of all, R gamma. And this generates a specified number of random, val random values from the gamma distribution you might be interested in with um, shape parameter alpha and rate parameter lambda. For instance, R gamma 6 comma 2 comma 0.5 gives six random values the time needed to get two occurrences of a randomly occurring event which occur with a mean density of one half per unit time. So on average, waiting time between events of two. Here and elsewhere, we could specify the scale parameter theta instead. If we do that, we have to specify it explicitly. So to get those same random values as before with the same um, set seed to start off from my random number generator, we would use r gamma 6 comma 2 comma scale equals 0.5. I'm sorry, scale equals 2. 2 being the reciprocal of 0.5. Next up is p gamma. Um, this is going to give you the cumulative distribution function of the specified gamma distribution. That is, it's going to return the probability that the waiting time for alpha occurrences is no more than x. As usual in R, x can be a vector here. So for instance, p gamma, 1 colon 6 comma 2 comma 0 0.5, is going to give the probability that the waiting time is less than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 3, etc in a gamma distribution with parameters alpha equals 2 and lambda equals 0.5. The inverse of that is q gamma. That's the inverse distribution function. It's going to return the value x such that p gamma of x comma alpha comma lambda is equal to the p specified in your q gamma call. It's going to compute quantiles in the specified gamma distribution. And as usual, p here can be a vector. So for instance, q gamma of the vector 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, comma 2, comma 0.5 gives you the 20th, 40th, 60th, and 80th percentiles in that same gamma distribution. Finally is the d gamma function. That's the probability density function, or PDF, of the gamma distribution with those same parameters. This is mostly useful, um, when you're using R at least, in creating density plots. And here's some code to generate a density plot for that same gamma distribution that we've been looking at lately. OK, let's do a few example problems. First of all, compute the probability that more than an hour elapses before 25 calls come in to a call center um, at which calls come in at an average rate of one every three minutes. Notice here that even though the word rate is being used, really what's being specified here is theta. Um, that is the scale parameter. In this case, theta is going to be equal to three minutes, so lambda is going to be equal to one third. The average number of occurrences per unit time per minute is going to be one third. OK, so let's swap over to um, R here. And let's get the probability that it takes longer than those um, 60 minutes for those calls to come in. Since we're talking about a probability um, for a time span, we're going to be using a p gamma function. Since we want a probability that the time is greater than 60 minutes, we're going to do 1 minus a p gamma. 1 minus p gamma, the time that we're interested in is 60 minutes. Next, we have to specify alpha, the total number of occurrences that we're interested in. In this case, that's 25. Finally, we need to specify the lambda, the average number of occurrences per unit time. In, that, in this case, that's one third. And we get about 
um, 84%. Of course, we could do this using the um, parameter theta. So let's get that same answer. So the time we're interested in 60 minutes and the shape parameter alpha do not change here. So I leave those the same. The scale parameter is the thing we're going to specify now. It's going to be equal to three, the reciprocal of lambda. Same number as we would expect. Number two. What's the 95th percentile for the time needed for five calls to come in? Okay, so here we're going to have the same scale parameter, the same rate parameter as before. However, in this case, the shape parameter alpha is different. Now we're only interested in five calls. We are given a percentile number here, the 95th percentile, and we want to find a waiting time. So this is going to be a Q gamma call. We need Q gamma of the percentile that we're interested in, 0.95. Notice that that percentile is given as a decimal. And then we have to specify the parameters. So um, in this case, we're interested in only five calls. And as before, lambda x is equal to one third. And I'll hit command enter to get the answer there. It is about 27.5 minutes. Problem three, simulate waiting times for five calls a thousand times, and then plot the results. Okay, notice that alpha here is again 0.5, just as it was in part two. So we're going to be using the same gamma distribution that we did, that we were using in part two. And so when we plot the results, the value that we got from part two, 27.46, should be noticeable on our graph. Okay, so since we're generating random values, this is going to be an R gamma function. Let's save the result as the vector times. First in R gamma, we specify the number of random values that we want, then alpha, then lambda. So 1,000, 5, and a third. We can print those out if we want, but it's going to be really ugly. There we are. Let's get a, uh, a histogram of this. I am going to use the qplot function. That's in the ggplot2 package, but I'm lazy, so I'll go ahead and load up all of tidyverse. Um, qplot function, quick plot, is a quick and dirty way of getting um, a, a nice histogram using the grammar of graphics. I'm not going to use the ggplot function here because then I'd have to build a data frame and I'm a little too lazy to do that. The vector I want to plot is times and that's really all I need to get a very quick plot. There we go. We can take a second to beautify this a little bit if we want. For instance, we can change the number of bins. I don't know, let's do 25. We can change our label on the x-axis, waiting time. Start with that. And um, let's do one other thing now. Let's also add a v-line showing that 95th percentile. So x-intercept equals, uh, it was, what, 27.46, I want to say. There we go. So we have randomly generated a thousand values from this distribution and drawing and then drawn a vertical line representing the 95th percentile, 95th theoretical percentile of this distribution. At a glance, it seems plausible to me that 5% approximately of the area of this histogram lies to the right of that bar. Any differences would be just due to random chance.